The topic we're going to talk about right now, this is called time value of money. And uh, time value of money is described by some folks as uh, the mathematics of wealth. Uh, you know, if you want to know how much you have to save every year so that when you retire you have a million dollars, time value of money is what you use. If you want to know what the uh, car payment is on your new car or what your payment is going to be on your new home, time value of money is the tool that you would use for that. Now, when you deal with time value of money, there's only two kinds of cash flows that we ever deal with, really. One's called a lump sum cash flow, and the other's called an annuity. Now, a lump sum cash flow is described as a cash flow that has no equal cash flow in any adjacent time period. An annuity is described as an even stream of cash flows, and you're about to find out that there are two kinds of annuities. There's ordinary regular annuities, and we have what are called annuity dues. Now let's talk about lump sum cash flows first. Again, a lump sum cash flow is a cash flow that has no equal cash flow in any adjacent time period. What I've drawn up on the top up here, this is a three lump sum cash flow timeline. And the $40 cash flow, for instance, that's a lump sum cash flow because there's no equal cash flow in any adjacent time period. So by definition, that $40 is indeed a lump sum cash flow. In point of fact, the $30, the $40, and the $50 are all lump sum cash flows. Before I go further, I want to talk about these time subscripts here. T0, T1, T2, T3, on and on. That's usually the way that cash flows are discussed in textbooks, courses, things like that. T0, now that's an important, uh, that's an important time period in time value of money. T0 is right now. It's the present. There will be a lot of applications in finance where we talk about finding the present value of all the future cash flows. Indeed, when we say that now, we're talking about valuing everything at time period zero in the present. Usually we do that because we have to make the decisions today and we want to know the value of all the money today. Equally important now, T1, T2, T3. T1, for instance, that's not the beginning of the first time period. That's the end of the first time period. T3 it's not the beginning of the third time period. It's the end of the third time period. All these subscripts indicate the end of the time periods. So if we went out and we bought a car and financed it for three years, 36 payments, technically you're going to make that last payment at T36. That's the end of the, of the 36th time period. Nothing complicated, but I want you to understand now when we talk about these different time periods and where the cash flow is, you need to understand that when we say T17, that means the end of the 17th time period. The other thing I want you to understand is time periods can be any length of time. A time period could be a day or a week or a six month period or a year or whatever it is, but they're always the same time periods. So if we're talking about 18 months, the time periods are in months. So T7 would be the end of the seventh month. Nothing complicated, but something you have to understand uh, so you don't make you know, just kind of simple mistakes as you go through this kind of thing. But those are lump sum cash flows. And again, a lump sum cash flow is a cash flow that has no equal cash flow in any adjacent time period. The other type of cash flow we're going to talk about now, this is called an annuity. There are two types of annuities now. There's what we call an ordinary or regular annuity, and there's what we call an annuity due. Now, ordinary regular annuities, these are defined as an even stream of cash flows received at the end of every time period. So an even stream, that means they're all the same. So $100 a year for 10 years, that's an annuity. You know, $1,000 a month for nine months, that's an annuity. 
an ordinary annuity now, the payments come at the end of every time period. Note that this is the first time period, the payments at the end. Second time period, the payments at the end. And the third time period, the payments at the end. So it's an even stream of cash flows received at the end of every time period. In this case now, we would, we would describe this as a $100 three-year ordinary annuity. $100 meaning that that's the value of each payment. An ordinary annuity meaning that it's at the end of every time period. And again, this is a $100 ordinary three-year annuity. Time periods are in years. There's three payments. Okay. An example of an of a ordinary regular annuity, a bank loan. If you go to the bank and borrow money for any reason, car loan, home loan, whatever it is, the payments don't start today. They don't give you the loan and then tell you that your first payment is today. What they're going to give, do is give you the, the loan and then your payments will start a month later. That's a bank loan. So if you borrow money for a house and it's a 30-year mortgage, you're going to make 360 payments. All those payments come at the end of every month. So T360, 360 months from now, 30 years from now, when you make your last payment, that payment's going to come at the end of that month. Not at the beginning of the month, but the end of the month. So a bank loan now is an example of an ordinary regular annuity. The other type of annuity now is referred to as an annuity due. And annuity dues are described as an even stream of cash flows received at the beginning of every time period. And again, these are called annuity dues. What you see down on the bottom here, this is a three-year, $100 ordinary, uh, I'm sorry, an ordinary annuity due. Three-year, $100 annuity due. Payments come at the beginning of every time period. Here's the first time period, the payments at the beginning. The second time period, the payments at the beginning. The third time period, the payments at the beginning. A three-year, $100 annuity due. An example of this kind of cash flow now would be a lease. If you were going to rent an apartment and you walked into the apartment and say, you know, I like the apartment, I'll take it. The landlord said, well, that's good. The rent starts right now. And indeed, if you sign a 12-month lease, uh, your payment's going to be due at the beginning of every month for 12 months. But when you make that last payment, though, in the 12th month, you're going to make that payment on December 1st. That'll be your 12th payment. But you get to stay there till the end of the month till the, the December 31st because your rent payments now, these are annuity dues. The payment is at the beginning of every time period and uh, each payment is equal and that would be an annuity due. Now with these annuities now, there's going to be something down, down the road here where we're gonna, I'm going to ask you what's the value of the annuity? The value of the annuity is always the value of each payment. So in other words, the value of this annuity due is $100. The value of this regular annuity is also $100. If I told you that you're going to get $1,000 every year for 12 years, what's the value of that annuity? $1,000. So again, nothing complicated, some terminology, but you need to understand some of these things as you go forward so that you can master time value of money.